Test one, two, test.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome into God's house here on the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. The sermon theme is Unexpected Grace, coming out of the Gospel reading from Luke chapter 16. And today, as we're leading up to the rite of confirmation, we'll hear from Molly Rasmussen as she shares her Confession of Faith essay with us during the offering. And as we've been saying from Psalm 122, I was glad when they said to me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Let's share that gladness with one another by greeting one another in the name of the Lord. Would you please be seated for our opening hymn? you to please rise. In remembrance of your baptism, you are invited to make the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, 
God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment of silence for self-examination according to God's word, specifically the Ten Commandments. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in this psalm. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, keep your church in your perpetual mercy. And because without you we cannot but fall, preserve us from all things hurtful and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. I invite you to please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 15th Sunday after Pentecost is from Amos chapter 8. Hear this, you who trample on the needy and bring the poor of the land to an end, saying, When will the new moon be over that we may sell grain? And the Sabbath, that we may offer wheat for sale, that we may make the ephah small and the shekel great, and deal deceitfully with false balances, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and sell the chaff of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Timothy chapter 2. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling, likewise also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man, rather she is to remain quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. In honor of this time in the life of Christ, we rise to the reading of the Holy Gospel preceded by the Alleluia and verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus also said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was wasting his possessions. And he called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Turn in the account of your management, for you can no longer be manager. And the manager said to himself, What shall I do? since my master is taking the management away from me. I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do, so that when I am removed from management, people may receive me into their houses. So, summoning his master's debtors one by one, he said to the first, How much do you owe my master? He said, A hundred measures of oil. He said to him, Take your bill, and sit down quickly, and write fifty. And then he said to another, and how much do you owe? He said, A hundred measures of wheat. 
He said to him, Take your bill and write eighty. The master commended the dishonest manager for his shrewdness. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than the sons of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous wealth, so that when it fails, they may receive you into the eternal dwellings. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If then you have... <coughs> If then you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in, what we, in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, heard all these things, and they ridiculed him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts, for what is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to please be seated for the hymn, and I'll come through the aisle to collect any prayer cards that there may be.
grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who loved you with his life. Amen. Our parable for this morning serves as the text for this message is Luke 16 and admittedly, admittedly the parable is difficult. What's going on? Who should we be paying attention to? Who should we be looking at? What should we be gleaning or learning from what Jesus is saying to his disciples and then also to us through it? I mean, when we think of parables, after all, we picture the parables like the parable of the Good Samaritan or the parable of the prodigal son, the parable of the sower, all of these very familiar parables that we can almost guess the ending because of how many times we've heard them before. We can guess the ending and understand what they say to us and how it impacts our lives today and also tomorrow. This parable, though, uh, the parable of the shrewd manager is tough. It's tough because it's not entirely clear. It's not a parable regularly quoted. And so what happens in it is not entirely expected. Especially when we, we, we walk through what's going on. And I want to kind of do that this morning. We're going to walk through this parable, but also use it in comparison with a parable right before it. See, in Luke chapter 15, we get a long list of parables. And right at the end, we get the parable of the prodigal son. So we'll kind of work in comparing these two together and how we see them, or how we see the unexpected grace of God come forth. So both parables, they, they build up quickly. They, they state the facts, the, the characters are created, the scene is set for what is about to take place. Luke 16, there's a manager who has been dishonest, who has been cooking the books, who has been wasting his master's possessions, and the account was brought to this rich man. And the rich man, well, called the manager in. And from there you can sense the the tension that's rising. The manager has done something wrong. And like all things in life, sin needs to be paid for. Grievances need to be settled. And so the rich man tells this manager he's no longer employed because of his dishonesty. And as though the the scene should just progress from there, as one might expect, okay, he's unemployed, oh, what's going to happen next? We, We get a picture of what goes on internally in this manager's mind. It's, uh, uh, if for those English people out here, it's called a soliloquy. It's where this conversation happens off to the side as though we're getting another take on, what every, on everything that is going on. So he says to himself, what shall I do since my master is taking my management away from me? I'm not strong enough to dig and I'm too ashamed to beg. I decide what I'll do. So when I'm removed from management, people will receive me into their houses. And it's in times like these, the times when we're at our wit's end, that that we retreat from the issues of life and go and contemplate, think. We try and ponder what we should do next. How we can get out of our situation. And so the the, the, the manager gathers all of the debtors together and he says to one, you owe him a hundred, cut it to fifty. You owe him 100? Well, how about you cut it to 80? The action was done. The crisis was averted. The hopes, in in the hopes and in the eyes of the manager. So what will happen next? Well, from Luke 15, we learn of a man with two sons. The younger son, desiring to have his inheritance, goes up to his father and says, Father, I really don't want you around anymore. Just give me my inheritance so that I can go and do what I want with it. And you can be kind of taken aback by the recklessness of this younger son. The tension that is now brought between the family members, the community, all because of his own greed. And so the father gives gives him his inheritance. And the son runs away to a kingdom far, far away. And he, exp- he spends all this wealth on exorbitant w- well, all of his exorbitant wealth on wild living. And day after day, he wastes it on sinful living and has become so, so addicted and accustomed to it. And then finally, a crisis comes. The land is struck with starvation, 
And not having a coin to claim for his name, he sells himself to someone in the area and longs to be fed with the, with the slop the pigs were eating. And just like in the parable of the dishonest manager, we get another picture of what this son is thinking. We get another story. Uh, we, we step into the mind of this son and he says, how many of my father's hired hands have food to eat while I sit here starving? I know what I'll do. I'll return home to my father and say, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I've no, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your servants. See, it's in situations like these where crisis has arisen, where the area of contemplation grows, where we can try and reason our way out of how well we might proceed, just like these characters have done. I mean, we know moments like these. Moments where maybe we're at our wit's end or we're overwhelmed with life. Maybe we're backed into a corner or we've hit rock bottom. Maybe it's with the relationships you have with your family or things you've done for yourself. We all maybe at one point in time have received that phone call that someone we love has passed away. And it seems like the whole world around us is, is flying by us about a million miles an hour and we can't just help but sit stuck here trying to figure out what we're going to do next. Or maybe someone else has found out something about you or, you've, or a sin has come forward and the same thing happens and you, you're trying to reason yourself out of this trying to figure out how you can proceed. We, we know these moments often as come-to-Jesus moments. They're situations where everything is laid bare and your cause to confess to yourself, to be honest with yourself in the situation you have found yourself in in life. And it's moments like these that we search for an answer through our situation. So how do these characters in these parables, do this. Well, they gamble on grace. Take a gamble. They take a chance, a risk. For the younger son, he he gambles on the grace of his father, not not knowing whether he's going to be received back well. He gambles on the grace of his father, though by rights in, in the light of the community, he should be dead on sight because, well, of the gross shame he brought on his family. And yet his gamble provided, proved to provide an unexpected welcome. We see the father running out to this son, throwing his arms on him, giving him a cloak, a ring, sandals, slaughtering the fattened calf and throwing a party because the son was back. That's something you can't expect and something you can't gamble for. For the dishonest member, though, dishonest manager. Knowing that he was about to lose all that he lived on, he gambled on the reputation of the master. He knew what kind of, what kind of reputation his master had, and so he slashed the debts, hoping to be well received, and the master by that point had, well, two choices. I can either say that this guy was fired already and looked bad, or I can go along with it and look good and just let him off the hook. Well, that's what happened. He's welcomed in the arms of these debtors, and both of these characters received this unexpected grace. What do, what do these parables have to say for us today, though? Well, first off, it encourages a, a life of daily repentance. See, these come-to-Jesus moments don't happen to us every single day. The divorce of a couple, the death of a loved one, reaching rock bottom with various addictions, with drugs, with alcohol, with work, whatever, you name it. All of these can and are, or can have the possibility of becoming come-to-Jesus moments. But these types of things don't happen every day. They're not a regular occurrence. Sure, some of these happen throughout our lives, maybe a few times, uh, but many, many people just seem to go with the flow and, uh, well, become accustomed to their sin. 
Maybe you rationalize it that it's not all that bad, or blame it on someone else pointing the finger like a child and say, well, they made me do it. Some people, just like the younger son, wait until their sin catches up with them. Others, like the manager, don't repent of their sin until they're found out. And in that instance, well, like this manager, he spends his whole life looking over his shoulder, fearfully wondering who might catch him, forgetting who is watching and that the Lord is watching in the first place, the one whom we all must give an account. Others, well, others just hope that they never have to be ousted from their sin and hope that they'll never get caught. But for Christians, for Christians, for those who who follow Jesus, this is all completely different. See, we live a life of daily repentance rather than a part of it. We come to Jesus as broken people in need of a Savior and daily give or daily receive from Him this abundant and unexpected grace. At the price of His life, given up for you on the death of on the death of His cross, His grace is poured out for you. That's first. Second, gambling at grace is a useless endeavor. The younger son gambles and doesn't even get out the initial line that he had recited in front of the mirror so many times. But he's welcomed back into his family. The manager, while his schemes succeed, but in a different way than he could even imagine. He receives commendation from the rich man. Thirdly, schemes, whatever they are, well, they're useless because grace is already here for you in Jesus. I mean, if anyone could be accused of misusing riches, it is Jesus. The King of kings and Lord of lords, the guy who had it all, willingly gave it all up for you. He gave up the riches of the kingdom of God and all that is so that you might receive the richness of his unexpected grace. See, he did it then with tax collectors and sinners as as we read in the beginning of Luke 15 as the the Pharisees and the scribes are, are mocking him saying, this man eats with tax collectors and sinners and even more so on his cross when he's looking down on the soldiers as they're gambling away his cloak. He says, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they're doing. This unexpected grace is given to you daily. And you don't have to gamble on it. It's something that he's promised to provide for your every need. It's nothing but grace that we have to live in this life. Every day we rise to experience new life and live in the abundance of of that grace of Jesus. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. Even when your sins may be mounting up, when you're running from them, when you may not even want to acknowledge that they're there. The unexpected grace of Jesus comes to you and it calls you to repent, to receive the faith and the commendation of the Lord that He's given to you through His death and resurrection. And as challenging as this parable may be, we can see the unexpected grace flowing out from Christ. He stands there, front and center, between friend and foe alike, calling all to himself, and showering them, showering them, just as he showers you with unexpected, unearned, free grace. And flowing out from his cross into your heart and soul, he cleanses you with the forgiveness of sins, creating a new life and a new way for you to live. One that serves your neighbor. One that serves Him in the grace and loves all those around with the grace that you've been given. It's unexpected, and yet it still is for you. In Christ Jesus, Amen. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Molly, we're going to hold off until the offering. So you got just a couple minutes, all right? Let's confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Please rise. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We go before our Lord with the prayer of the church. Kind Father, your Son declared to us that we cannot serve you and also be devoted to money. Free all your baptized children from obsession with the goods of this world, that they may set their hearts on the joys of the kingdom and the inheritance that never fades. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, you entrust your people the abundant wealth of Christ's salvation in your word and sacraments. Bless all pastors, faculty, and staff, missionaries, as they serve together for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. God, our Savior, uphold President Biden, Governor Walls, and all whom you have placed in high positions with wisdom and mercy, that we may lead peaceable and quiet lives, godly and dignified in every way. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, be with the sick and those who suffer, those troubled in mind, those grieving in their sorrows, and the dying in their last hours. Lord, we pray for the family of Miriam Bungie, whom the Lord called home this past Tuesday. And Lord, we ask that you would grant safe travel for Helen and Peter as, and, their, and Peter's caregiver as they travel to Michigan for the funeral. Lord, we also pray for Dave Hazy, who continues to remain hospitalized. Grant to him your care and keeping as he will soon return to home from the hospital, so bless him in that transition. Be also with Bob Carlson, who will have another cancer treatment this coming Wednesday. Have mercy upon him and his family. Have mercy upon him in body and in soul. Lord, we also place before you those we name in our hearts. Grant them the comfort of your presence, relief according to your will, and peace in their hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, as our congregation continues, to the, continues in the conversation about a building project, we ask that you would keep us ever united in the faith and united in the mission of our congregation to share hope and teach Christ. Help us to consider how the gifts we have been given may be further used to carry on the legacy of faith here in this congregation and community. Lord, in your mercy, dear Lord, we give you thanks and praise for Dolores Hazy as she celebrates her 99th birthday today. We especially give you thanks and praise that she is your child, named and claimed in the water and the word of holy baptism. Keep her ever in the faith to life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, gracious God, your son gave himself as a ransom for all and now gives himself to us that we might have life and salvation. Give us unity and faith and hearts eager for mercy as we receive his body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks to you, O Lord, for you have forgiven our debt of sin for the sake of Jesus. Preserve us in his grace and life until that day when you gather us to be, uh, to be among the saints in glory around your throne. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
invite you to please be seated as we go before our Lord with our offerings and tithes. I'll invite you to take the fellowship pad on the inside portion of the pew, filling out one name per line. And also at this time, I invite Molly Rasmussen forward to deliver her confession of faith essay. We receive our gifts. I was baptized on May 18, 2008 at St. Joseph's Church in Waconia, surrounded by my family, friends, and my godparents. My parents decided to baptize me so that I could be in God's family and grow up surrounded by the faith. They wanted me to know that I could have eternal life and so that I could always be reassured that God was by my side. To my parents, it is important that I confess the faith because it is a celebration of my faith to the church and to God. Additionally, it will help me to acknowledge the values that I have learned in catechism and by going to church. Confessing the faith is important to me because it will help me to always remember my faith and that God is by my side. With my faith, I will always be reminded that God loves me. When my mom asked me about her faith, she said that one of the most important things that she has taken away from the Christian faith is that she has learned that leaving your worries and uncertainties with God is very comforting. I think that that is a very important thing to remember because when times get hard, it is reassuring to know that God is always by our side to help us through the toughest things. As I have grown up, my family has seen me grow in my faith as well in several ways. One way they have seen this is they have watched as I have gained a better understanding of God's word and developed my faith. They have seen me become more eager and willing to talk about God and my beliefs. My family has always encouraged me in my faith and will continue to for the rest of my life. They will keep supporting me by continuing to bring me to church and by talking about Jesus and how he saves us. Weekly attendance at church is very important to me because I can receive the body and blood of Jesus and continue to be educated on the Bible and God's teaching. It is very important in my future because I want to be able to pass on faith to my own children and be able to educate them. I will also attend Mayor Lutheran High School. It is important to me and my parents that I go to a Christian high school because I want to be surrounded by people who have the same faith and beliefs in me. Also, going to Mayor Lutheran will allow me to further develop my faith as I learn even more about the Bible and everything God has done for us. I'm also looking forward to receiving my education in a faith-based manner. Even though many fall away from their faith, I plan to continue to be strengthened in my faith throughout my life. I will do this by always going to church to hear about Christ and all he did for us. I will also receive the Lord's Supper and absolution every week. I will keep my faith strong by continuing to read God's word and learn about all of his gifts and by praying daily with my family and by myself. Lastly, I will continue to have conversations with my family about our faith and beliefs. Please pray with me. Dear God, please help me to remain steadfast in my faith throughout my entire life and help me to remember the faith I was baptized in and how it saves me and how through Jesus we can have eternal life with you in heaven. Please be with me as I continue my journey in faith and please help me to always be surrounded by people who will motivate me to stay strong in my faith and my beliefs. Amen. Thanks, Molly. I'd like you to make a joyous noise to the Lord.
Take a moment to prepare ourselves for the sacrament of the altar, first by hearing God's word in St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a person examine himself then, and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. So as we take to heart the word of the Lord, if you have not been instructed in the Lutheran faith or you doubt the presence of the Lord in this meal, it's out of love for you that we would ask you to refrain from attending. Speak to a pastor after the service if you have any questions. And if you'd like to come forward and receive a blessing, simply fold your arms across your chest so that we would know to do so. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who out of love for his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
please rise. Now may this true body and this true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and protect you in both body and soul to life everlasting. Depart with peace and joy. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. We join in seeing. Thank the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in, your, in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. you please be seated. Greetings to you in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ. 
Lots of opportunities to share hope and teach Christ coming up. I need to start off with an announcement of apology. All right? The apology is in regards to our church directory. All right? So things did not go as planned. That's the best way that I can put it with the church directory. All right? And because of that, um, we've had to do a lot of troubleshooting just to be able to get an online app of the pictures. However, if you received your pictures, you may not be satisfied with your pictures. Uh, we've heard that from multiple people. The church did receive a refund for the church cost, but we have no idea, we're going to be completely honest, on that minimal amount, how you refund all the people that may have purchased pictures. Hmm. You can see the quandary that we're in. Okay. If you would like a different picture in the directory, if you want to come and yell at somebody because you're mad about your picture and stuff, everything, you could also come to me. All right, we can do that too. All right, but <clears throat> besides that, if you want to submit a photo because you're not happy with your photo, please submit it to the church office. The email address is in there. Just make sure that your photo is appropriate. All right? <laughs> Let me say that in advance. We do hold the right of refusal. All right? <clears throat> so anything with Vikings apparel, not allowed. Okay. <laughs> Certainly not that stuff that you wear, Robert. <laughs> not even the tie. Not even the tie. Don't try to hide it. Not a small pin. Nothing. All right? We will find it. All right. Also, the online directory will be available on the app next Sunday, September 25th. So if you're looking for what your picture is and you don't know what it is and then you see your picture and you're not happy with your picture and you want to send in another picture, you can do that and you can have other people see a nicer picture. All right? Again, please forgive the problem that we're facing. It has been a lot of headache in the office trying to figure out even what to communicate to all of you. At the end, we'll have a very big group hug to get through it all. Okay, all right. Other announcements. On the front of this bulletin are the contact information. Last week, um, we did not share this with you. If you're sending anything to the church, our church secretary, through the month of December, we're doing kind of a trial thing uh, with our office right now, but anything for the church, please do send that in to Amy Guzzi. If it's anything school-related, please send it in to Jolene Jacobs, who is our school secretary. All right? Also, if you ever have any emergency pastoral needs and it's after office hours or Mondays is Pastor Andrew and I's day off, please, if it's a Monday, call the school office, school and church office, everything. They will direct it to us, all right? One of us is always on call on a Monday, all right? You're on call tomorrow. All right. <clears throat> so... That's actually the truth. We actually have it arranged that whoever was preaching that Sunday, they have the weekend. So it allows us to keep it. But you don't have to figure that out. We have to figure that out. Okay? If you have an emergency after hours, please do contact our secondary number, which is his home number. It's listed in there. Or my home number. It's his cell number and stuff and everything, which is because he's far advanced. I still have a landline. Okay. <clears throat> so... Mine, you still have to turn the crank, you know, and everything for the phone. Yeah. Yeah, so please speak to the operator. Okay. All right. This guy's got a birthday coming up this week, so if you want to wish him a happy birthday, he's almost catching up to me in age, so that'll be great. So, <clears throat> still can grow a better beard than I can. All right. Sunday school starts today. What a celebration. Sunday school starts today. That's going on over in the gymnasium here. Ladies' Bible study is going on at 7.15 p.m. on Wednesday in uh, the church basement. Feed My Starving Children, if you haven't signed up, please do so. Financial Peace University is coming up. And we're going to have a marriage class that's going to be coming up as well. So lots of opportunities. Zion Master Facilities Plan Meeting. Okay, so if you weren't here this past Thursday, you need to be here this coming Thursday. All right? Because the Master Facilities Plan was approved. Now we decide what direction we're going to take. Okay? So there's going to be multiple options that are presented. They were presented this past Thursday. They're going to be presented again. And we will be voting as a congregation what direction we are going to go. If you want your voice to be heard in that vote, 
that is the time to show up. Thursday, 6.30 p.m., all right? So please be there for that meeting. Big impact on our congregation. Obviously, a lot to celebrate when you have a school that's exploding in terms of enrollment. So that's a great thing, so we obviously need space. Faith Event Hayride, October 1st. Please do all come to that. That is in every generation. It is a wonderful opportunity. I can honestly say some of my joyous memories in the congregation, fellowship-wise, have happened at that Hayride event out at the Vinkemeyer. So, great, great opportunity. Walkathon, if you haven't given towards the Walkathon and you'd like to do so, you can do those oh, Monday, September 26th. And I think that's it. I might have gone longer than the sermon. <clears throat> you are welcome. Two for the price of one. All right. All right. With that, I invite you to go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.